Hi guys, welcome back to the MIM Buzz stage. We are here live in Birmingham with the cast of Starskin Hutch. Woo! Yeah, yeah. How are you guys doing? Great. Anointed. <laughs> oh, do you have to call you sir now? It's not working? Uh, do you want to hold it? Hold it up. Hold it up like that? Your mic isn't working. Close to the mouth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this couch is a hell of a lot more comfortable than those chairs, I gotta tell you. <laughs> well, we don't want you to get to sleep on there, though, because we have lots of questions to ask you. And first of all, it's great to have the three of you here on stage and with the two cars as well, the Torino and the Galaxy. I think that's a first for the UK, is that right? I think it's the first time the three of you with the two cars have been here in the UK. Uh, when they accompany the cars, I think, the cars are more popular in the evening. The cars are more popular than you? Yeah, yeah we're just window dressing for the cars. We go along with them. Wherever they go, we go. Yeah. That's how it works. And then, um, who's been driving then? Say who's been doing the driving then? Oh, I, I have no idea. It wasn't me. <laughs> Here we go again. Well, certainly, we go. I think it has to go by the mouth. Oh. <laughs> well, you guys are certainly jokers, and you actually, I guess, were a true bromance before the word even existed. <laughs> Star Wars. I'm not doing it. Well, you're doing it. I'm blaming both of you. I'm not doing it. I've done it. But yeah, so you guys were the true original bromance, I guess. Oh, we were? I think so. What do you guys think? Oh, you're, Im you're not impartial. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how much of that, you know, especially with things like the teasing about the cars, how much of that was you guys ad-libbing? Well, uh, w uh, yeah, it wasn't teasing, though. What he was he was really pissed off about me having that car and driving all the time. Uh -huh. I wouldn't get caught dead in his car. And he was always trying to get a ride. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if Huggy Bear had his own car, what would it have been? Oh, yeah, what would it be? Volkswagen. A Volkswagen. I don't know. You know, Huggy was a survivor, so if it took men taking the bus or, you know, a car or... Or anything like that? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. You know, everybody said it would have been a pimp mobile or a Cadillac, Cadillac or convertible. Cadillac convertible, diamond in their back, sun rooftop, digging the scene with the gangster link. <laughs> and an eight track. And an eight track. I don't know if the guys know even what that is. I know. know it's you guys know? eight track. An eight track is a is a is a, the the first cassette that went into cars. It was about as big as a suitcase. And um, so, speaking of the car, the striped tomato, um, how was it to drive? Because that's what everyone's wondering, right? I mean, it looked like a cool car, but did you hate it or did you love it? Have you ever driven a boat? No. <laughs> Who out here has driven a boat? You know what I mean. It was, uh, it, 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 it just kind of, you know, melted from one side of the road to the other. <laughs> and um, I also know that you've also been in the cameo, well, made cameos in the 2004 remake, well, both of you. So did they consult you at all when you remade that, when they were remaking it? it ben Stiller what? and Owen Wilson, did they ask you about playing the roles? Oh, yes. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. They did. I didn't tell them a thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, is that why they played it so differently then, I guess? No, they, they played it differently because it was a different time and it was a different situation and because rediscovering the chemistry 
or creating that is really an, uh, 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 about luck. Yeah. It's, it's nothing more than and everything about that. So when you guys were um, going for the roles of Huggy and uh, Starsky and Hutch, did you guys do some sort of chemistry test? Yes. Because they have those, right? He kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it for his sight. Well, it must have been a good kiss then. He is a good kisser. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and I didn't have to kiss any ass. No, that's not what you had to kiss. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, if you guys had to describe each other's characters then, what would you say about each other? I'm, surpri I'm, surpri I'm surprised I showed up on the set. <laughs> we were too. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I was just amazed. Um, you know, you, when you do something like that, you're just doing a job. And One, I was two, just, three. I was just happy to have a job and to be with these two guys and watching them do their thing. I was just as enamored with, with the opportunity every day to come in and, and, and just have fun and getting paid for something that I love to do, you know? So it was cool. And Huggy was obviously a really popular character. So why do you think he was so popular? Well, you know, I didn't know that. You know, I, I didn't know Huggy was popular. I probably would have asked for more money. And I probably wouldn't have gotten it. But, uh, you know, this is after the fact. It's after the fact that I could be sitting here, and we could be sitting here 42 years later because of something that we did that was interesting to people and, uh, and, and, and touched a chord. So... You know, the rest was sort of like just uh, luck and life and who knows what. Well, as you're saying, 42 years later, you have lots of fans of the show. But what was it like at the time? Was there much of a fan response when the show was on TV? Well, not, initi not initially. Yeah. Uh, initially, we didn't even think it was going to go past the uh, pilot stage. Uh -huh. uh, did we? No, I don't sitting up in front of the, you and I were standing up in front of the little theater at Fox, yeah. and they were screening the pilot, and I turned to you and I said, thank God, this isn't going to be a series. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and um, when you were filming, one thing I was wondering is, who did the stunts? Did you do them yourselves? And who was the best and boldest when it came to doing the stunts? Uh, that's a very sore question. You've got to be careful about that. Well, how many stuntmen did you put in the hospital? <laughs> we, uh, we each did uh, a lot of our stunts. Yeah. No, the, the key really uh, um, about uh, doing stunts is, we do, well, number one, we had uh, two very, very good teachers uh, who, who doubled for us all the time. And they also taught us a lot about stunt work. So and the idea for a stunt man, for a, the guy who does the stunts, is to take the actor as far into the action as possible and bring him out as soon as possible. In other words, bring him in, do the stunt that's the dangerous part, and then the actor comes in and comes out as quickly as can, quickly as possible, out of the, out of the action. And that's, and that's what these guys were particularly good at. Finally, it came to the time where we could do a, a lot of our own stunts. And, uh, you, you know, you, you live and learn as you go because you always think you can do more than you can really do. Yeah. And you pay for it. Is there any particular that come to mind? Well, there's one scene in the beginning of the, in the pilot where I jump off, a, jump off the wall and I, and I thought to myself in midair, I said, you know, it's so easy to, to step down on top of that car. I gotta do something. And so I made a decision in midair, I'm gonna land on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And I paid for it, but boy, I, <laughs> I did not admit it. It killed me. Yeah. But it looked good. It, lo yeah, it looked great. 
and they used it, of course, in every episode of Starsky and Hutch thereafter in the, in the opening segment. But um, that was the kind of stupidity that uh, actors sometimes contrive. And uh, I'm sorry that I did that, but uh, I did. Yeah. Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> um, and you didn't just act in the show, though. You both directed as well. So what's it like going behind the camera? That's, that's a hard question. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, a lot of work. In the beginning, we didn't have a particularly big cheering crowd for us as directors. No. They, they, they wanted us to fail. Uh, but uh, it was very enjoyable and very educational. David, David, was, uh, David was, is, is a really good director, you know? And likewise, you are, Paul. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rick. And I had the experience of being directed by these two guys. Yeah, uh, what was and that like? The, in particular, there's two shows, of course. Uh, in the last season of the show, David directed an episode called Huggy Can't Go Back. And it was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had on Starsky and Hutch because so many elements came together in that episode. And then, of course, Mr. Mr. Glazer directed the last, the last episode of the show, uh, Sweet Revenge, yeah. yeah, Sweet Revenge, and that was also a, a coming together of a lot of things, the resolution as well as the letting go and all these mixed emotions that, uh, you know, that, you know, having the experience of being with these guys for these many, those many years, um, well, in a way it was quite emotional, but the fact is that these guys were too sensitive and caring actors who also have the ability to transpose that to actors in, in directing medium. My first Favorite experience in directing, in directing, my first experience in directing, I wanted to direct very much. There was a thing called survival. And um, they got to the, uh, the, the day, you think it's gonna be easy, you know? And I arrived on set up at the uh, observatory in Griffith Park, at the top of the, in, in looking all over Los Angeles. And there was a crane, and there was an insert car, and there was, there was a crew of 70 people. And you look at these guys and say, what the hell am I doing here? Now there's, a, there's an unwritten law in, in filmmaking, get the first shot, get the shot, and then you, you're moving, okay? And then you can move this, make a second shot, and then a third, and now it's got some sort of a rhythm to it. Uh -huh. But I, I had not a clue. It's like, what am I gonna do? And finally, I just said the simplest thing, put the camera on sticks and get a car to drive by. Just, and that, that was the opening shot. And I got that and I said, wow, that's like gone with the wind. You know, and then you were behind schedule. Then I was right? behind schedule at that point. That's the other thing you're always up against in television, or we were then certainly. And that is, uh, you have limited time, and uh, you've got to get a, a, a lot of stuff done in limited time. And Starsky and Hutch was shot in seven, mostly seven days. And Which today, um, today is unheard of. Yeah. Today they take uh, ten days. And, yeah. Uh, and the shows now are, our show is actually, without the commercials, 48 minutes long. They'd say it was an hour show, but it was 48 minutes. Now it's 44. Is that right? Mm. I've, been, I've, been in the, I've been in the UK for so long, I don't know how long things are. And <laughs> for, at 48, it's 44 minutes now. Yeah. Boy, that tells you how com commerce, commercials have taken over, you know? Well, they gotta pay for it somehow. Well, they're making money. Well, I feel like we're talking numbers now. And speaking of, you guys made 92 episodes in the end. 93 hours. Well, I think it was the 93 hours. Including the, yeah, including the, the movie. So would you say that there's certain popular episodes or more popular episodes that, get, say, the guys, the fans here talk about the most? I, I don't know. You'd have to ask, ask them. them. Ask yeah. them. Popular episodes, guys? You really love the show that much, huh? <laughs> you love them all. Right? Everybody talk at once. <laughs> the 
too shy, but we are going to come around and give you a chance to ask some questions in just a moment. So just think of your questions, stick your hands up, and I'll be right to you. Um, but before that, I've got to ask, because talking about making television, certainly now there is a bit, a bit of a trend to remake old shows. What do you think it would take to make Starsky and Hutch in this day and age? A time machine. You know, we had an idea, Paul and I had an idea that we were talked about for a while until the, uh, uh, until the other show happened, you know, um, and that was to pick up Starsky and Hutch on down the road 30, 35 years later when they're just too old to do the running and jumping and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they don't necessarily see eye to eye on much of anything except there's a situation that draws the two back together again. Uh -huh. And I think to, see, to, to watch something like that happen, you know, as you know it yeah. from, this, from the show, yeah. and then to take it down the road to see what happens to these characters 30, 35 years later. See the bromance still That alive. would have been fun. And what would Huggy be doing in that? Oh, he'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd either be dead or, or the head of security at Las Vegas doing some kind of undercover work to, to pick out cons and people who are Wait shady. Wait a second, that's my job. <laughs> well, you know, I learned a lot from you guys. <laughs> He's going to take your job from you. That's the sequel. <laughs> okay, I was an, I, I'd become a doctor. Uh-huh. <laughs> doctor. Dr. So, Starsky. Dr. Starsky. Dr. Starsky. <laughs> boom, boom. What kind of doctor? Uh, uh, not, not in front of these people, you don't. <laughs> don't. Don't even go there, okay? <laughs> okay, on that note, we are going to go to the audience. So, guys, please stick your hands up and we will come and ask you. Do. Uh, yeah. Hello. 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 Can you see me now? Can do. Um, my name's Jasmine. I'm here with my sister. We grew Speak up. Speak a little all louder, kids. darling. Speak Can you hear me now? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, better. I'm here with but my. But I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm here with my sister, Smina. My name is Jasmine, and we were little children, and we all grew up with you. And my whole family love all of you. One question that I'd like to ask is, where's the iconic cardigan? The iconic cardigan in the opening scene. To Paul. You mean where the original is? Well, I have the foggiest idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I wish I could give you an inside tip, but I, I don't know. Okay, another question here. Yep. Hi, guys. Uh, Hi. My name's Julie, and I'm from Plymouth. I'm 50 next month. Um, can I have a birthday kiss, please? <laughs> Oh, come on. That's it, baby. Yeah. Have a happy one. <laughs> Any more questions? This one. Oh. Hi, uh, my name's Darren. And I wanted to ask each and uh, one of you about the audition for the show, your very first time you heard about this show and the actual audition the first time. Can you talk about that as individuals and how it went? Well, I, I didn't have to audition. Um, the reason is because uh, uh, Aaron Spelling had seen uh, the film uh, Magnum Force. And um, he offered, he sent the script to me and uh, to, I was in my, with my, my parents' home back out in New York and um, in th Thanksgiving. And I read the script, and the role of Hutch just didn't interest me at all. The role of Hutch was like white bread, and it was, uh, you know, <laughs> no color. And I said, uh, "Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I'm interested in the show, but I'd like to do, I'd like to do Starsky, because it had some flash and some color and some. It was interesting." And he said, "No, if you if you want to do Starsky, you're you're out." <laughs> No, it did not going to work. So I, I quickly agreed to do Hutch. Then um, I met, met Paul. Well, I, I've known Paul off and on, not, not well, but we were acquaintances and, and we uh, respected each other's work back in New York. 
in 1966, 67, in that period in New York, which was a happening time in New York. And um, lo and behold, who should walk into the room but Paul? And he could take it from there. So I, uh, the Spelling and Goldberg have been after me to do a series for a long time. And uh, when I read the pilot, I thought, well, this will never be a series. It'll probably be a two-hour movie and like that. And uh, when I went to the audition, because I had to audition, I, I didn't have that kind of an in. You know, I hadn't been in a big, well, I thought Fiddler on the Roof, but, you know, anyway. So, so I went in and, uh, and uh, I sat down on the floor because the room was very crowded. You sat at a table. No, I sat on the oh, floor in, the, the, in, the, in the, the little building, the writer's building. Oh, okay, yeah. And then the secretary woke me up and said, are you here to audition? And I said, yes, because everybody else had left. <laughs> so I said, okay. So, so I went in there and I sat down and I was very hungry. So I took a couple of walnuts from my pocket of my cardigan. But we had it in the table. It was in a, it was in a dish on the, on the table. And I uh, cracked it open and I started reading and I got through a page and a half and they said, you can stop right there. And I said, thank you very much. And I left. Well, we used that, we used that the nut back and forth. Yeah. Remember? He said, you know, can you give me that piece? Can I have that piece? Yeah. And we, we went back and forth while the scene was going on. Yes. And so it was, it was like that, that immediate sort of, you want to call it chemistry, was obvious. And they said at the end of the period when he, when he left, these are our guys. So that was that. Now you want to go on there? Me? <laughs> Well, for some strange, curious reason, people didn't, people didn't have a handle on what African-American actors could contribute um, to television and all of that. And I was a young, hungry mm. actor in New York. I did a, I did a film called Bar um, Cross 110th Street with Anthony Quinn, Tony Francioso, and a couple of other guys, and, and a guy named um, Dick Ward. Uh, African American actor, and and the guy who directed that movie was name was Barry Shear, and it just so happened that when I got to L.A. and I was looking for work and all of this, I heard that Aaron Spelling wanted to uh, wanted me to come in, and because I was recommended by Barry Shear, who directed the movie Cross 110th Street, to play this role. It was just one little scene in in the, in the pilot and I didn't even know what a pilot was. Um, and I would just do a little, you know, and, and I came in, as you see in the, in the opening credits, you see me come in the theater, look around, and then I eventually sit behind or in front of these guys, and I give them some information, and I, like, they had the pop, they had the, the walnut passing. Well, we had popcorn in that scene, and somehow there was this passing of the popcorn or eating the popcorn, and this, I guess, chemistry was created, and they had an idea that this guy would be an addition to, to, this, to this story, and here we are, you know, 42 years later. They, fig they figured that it was a lot cheaper to keep us in popcorn. <laughs> than money. Than money. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry that we're running out of time. Oh, no. So we're gonna... Out of time. I am sorry, but I have one quick question for you before we go. Um, if you, are you guys going to be on screen together working again? That's what we want to know, right? When are we going to see you all together again? You're seeing us right now. We're on stage right now. <laughs> that is, is about to go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, working together. Well, you never know, you know? It's one, of those, it's one of those things. It's like, that's one of the things about acting. You just, you just don't, you can't say for sure about anything. You know, and uh, even even the top box office people, they don't know. You know, you do a work, you do a job, and you spend a lot of time waiting, or a lot of time doing something else. You have to. You know, especially if you want to start out as an actor, you better find another another job because it ain't going to work like now. You're not going to get a job as an actor now. 
So find some other job that put, you know, to, to pay the rent. Be a doctor. Yeah, and then go back to, to what your real love is, which yeah. is the theater or acting, and do it. Well, we think you guys are great together. We would love to see you again together. You've Thank been you. great on the stage. The fans have loved you. Everyone give a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, the, the feeling is mutual. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everybody.